this meeting is live streaming so it's that being means seen to a third party. we are live oh <laughs> <laughs> that's good news we did it we did it all right sorry everybody that was waiting um i really would like to get amanda on Streamyard for several reasons one i want to, her to be able to read your comments and I want to be able to show the comments and, and it just is a lot easier um, and a lot more visual experience. But until we figure it out, we'll just keep yeah. on <laughs> we'll keep yeah. on going in Zoom. And the reason they have a, a shared airpiece is because uh, for some reason they couldn't hear me without it. So um, now everybody knows what's going on. Welcome from South Africa to the world. How are you oh, guys today? Thank you. Very well, thank you, Carmen. Very well, thanks. It's becoming summer, so we're happy. Yeah, just the opposite here. I've got it was seventy five yesterday, but then it got down to thirty last night. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that's cold. Cold, and then yeah. it's back warm again today. This is Texas for you. Um, yeah. And so I'm excited to to do this. We have so many things that we have running that we want to keep working on, but this is something that was really important to me. I, I've just seen so many people suffering and I know it increases during the holidays. Um, people, um, and I, I, before I begin this thought, can I ask you a question? Who mostly comes to you? Is it mostly therapists and counselors that need help? Or is it mostly people from all over the world that have had some sort of SRA or mind control? Okay, I'm getting quite a few of those cries for help. Um, on that one, and also especially when it's when it's a dark season like now, um, <laughs> definitely. But then also therapists that want are asking for training. So, yeah, it's 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 a mixed group, you know, that that are crying out for help, yeah. and those that have been going for a while, uh, I'm stuck. Uh, can you help me? You know, what is my next step? So, yeah. Okay, good. Because that's what I was thinking. And according to Cheryl Beck, she estimates there's close to 30 million or more mind controlled or, you know, whatever globally. Mm -hmm. It could be more, it could be less. I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But when I started thinking about it, um, after watching this man who has gone public with his story and just seeing how much he's struggling, but he's trying so hard to share what he knows, you know, he's just, yeah. and I can see the, the pain that he's going through and, and he'll talk about like how he's one, he knows he's anointed, he knows he's God's, but he'll be somewhere or talking to somebody and he knows he's being stalked by, you know, Freemasons and he knows that he is, um, that his family's being harassed in ways and they don't want him to, to have any support at all. And mm -hmm. I just think that that's what's so wonderful about this. Anyone who has a phone can yeah. get support from you in, okay. in this. And, and it's, it's people like that didn't walk into it. They were born into it. Yeah, and I think right. the level of compassion has to be so much higher. But then there's people who just walk into it unaware sinning. Hmm. And then there's even, you know, a higher spectrum of person. And this is where, you know, I had gone through all of my my stuff. I have done all the work. I, I stay and I pray. But I had been doing things with curiosity and learning and understanding hmm. the world that that took me down into this attraction to these weird stories, right? Hmm. And hmm. that had a hook. So, yeah. so that's what made me ask you about this is yeah. here, here's someone who isn't even struggling to the level of SRA, mm. um, but found myself going down this path because I wanted to understand the enemy, but I mm. went too far down the path and then getting out of it, you know, and I would call that new age. And, and yeah. I know that's going to offend people, but um, that's what, that's what I was doing. I was thought I was a Christian. I didn't know it was called New Age. I just was interested in all of those things. I found them yeah. fascinating. I'm a spiritual. I didn't have a way to satisfy myself in those ways. So with that in mind, yeah. all three of those types of people, we're going to hand it over to you and tell us about the demonic um, hooks. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I think, Carmen, uh, just to add to what you've said, is uh, people that are in ministry, 
um, and didn't realize the depth of darkness that they are getting into by working with SRA and then got into trouble. And and I've helped quite a, quite a number of those counselors where they, they got into trouble and they got attacked and they never realized their bloodlines were still, there were still issues on the bloodline that was never touched. Um, they they got in too deep um, and, and didn't know how to get out and didn't know how to fight the battle. And so we've actually been journeying with, with one of the counselors here in South Africa that she's just been sitting in watching and listening and learning. And uh, she, she has just said that if she didn't, I mean, she's got into trouble. Um, because because she got into deep into stuff um, and and didn't know how to paddle a way out. And so she just said one thing she's really learned, and that is to be pretty wide awake and to realize that this is not a game. And mm -hmm. as your title says, you can't just walk away. It's yes. not going to work. Yes. Um, you're going to have to do the work and get the doors closed. And you've got to identify the doors. And so we have done, um, for example, one of the intercessors, <clears throat> and she's a she's really sharp. She's she's not a baby. She's been she's a seasoned intercessor, been praying for the country, uh, political stuff, you know, really been working hard. And she's a therapist herself. And um, she got involved in a prayer group. And this prayer group was very super duper spiritual and said to her, hey, we're going we're gonna to start traveling in the spirit now. We're going to start seeing things and we want to show you how to do it. And so they introduced her to Metatron and saying, but he is like, like um, an angel that serves Jesus. And so you've got to get into his vehicle, the Merkaba. And she I'm guilty. said, sure. You know, yeah, so she, yeah. she said, sure, great stuff. Let's go because she's she's ready to, to learn. And, and and she got immediately common. Her blood pressure shot um, sky high. She got sick. Her she she had to wear a watch that would read her uh, energy levels, wake up in the morning with five percent energy after sleeping a whole night. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. So we battled quite some heavy battles with her in getting those doors closed and her repenting for ignorance and thinking that these people are kosher, they're okay, and let's, you know, she jumped into this world of intercession, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. It was pretty uh, dangerous stuff that she got into. And through lack of knowledge, the word says, my people perish. And she was busy perishing. As mm -hmm. a therapist, she was yep. perishing. So she couldn't just walk away because her health wouldn't recover. She was pretty sick. I would so, go so um, far as to say that hosts like me are in the same vulnerable position. So people, are, my initial thought was give people a place to tell their story. Yeah. The problem is, in my opinion, and I would like to hear more details, the problem is when I began doing it, and this is why I shut it down, um, I started realizing that I was intertangling with darkness, unaware, unaware. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, once I saw it and tried to close it down, yeah. There was all kinds of residual stuff. There was all kinds yeah. of agony Pick that back. I had to go through, all the repenting I had to. And, and yeah. I still think there's things, because like I hadn't thought about that, but I remember listening to this woman talk about the Merkaba and all that, and it sounded so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And I tried to imagine myself in it. It didn't work, but but this is what happens, like a, yeah. a really good hearted person. And this is where we're wasting time. We're wasting time figuring yeah. out all the occult stuff when really yeah. all we need to do is go live our lives. Yeah. 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 Now, you know, if, if this is your field, you know, if you are a therapist and you are working in this field, um, I think you've got to know where to stop, where to draw the line, where to put the boundaries and not to cross boundaries that God has forbidden 
for right. us to cross. So, um, and and yeah, as I say, Common, I've really um, bumped into quite a few people in ministry mm-hmm. that have got into trouble um, just through ignorance, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's not that they they were not looking for trouble. They didn't want to open up demonic doors, but they did, you know. Right. And so you've got to do the homework. And so, so for instance, let's say I'm an innocent host and I have a variety show, like not like uh, at some point there, I was just, that's all I was interviewing where we're victims. Um, but let's just say I had like a variety show and I bring in somebody that's, you know, like Anton LaVey's, you know, protege. I don't know that they are. They're very successful yeah. <laughs> musician or they're very successful something else. Yeah. Can they, can they multiply through the platform? Can they contaminate people through the platform? Oh, absolutely. And this is what I don't think people are aware of. Yeah, no, absolutely. If they know what they're doing and they understand frequencies and they know uh, a techno sorcery, which is our end time warfare, this is what we're, this is what we're fighting. Um, if if they know all of that, they're able to get onto your platform and really cause havoc. And and they will be able to uh, scan the, the viewers and see who's open and then even try and contact them afterwards as well to try and worm their way in. I mean, this is how they've been trained. Right. Uh, they've been trained to, to fight. And that's why, uh, Carmen, it's very dangerous to get a group of survivors in in a in a group mm-hmm. because they they all have dark parts in the back that they're not even connected with or aware of. Uh, some are, some aren't. But what happens is they've been trained to combat. And so they combat each other within the group. And it is chaos. It's absolutely well, chaos. Well, and that's that's also what happened too. This one's mad at this one. How can you talk yeah. to this one? I'm, yeah. you know, this person's a bad person. And I just look at all mankind as God's children until they prove to me that they're Satan's. <laughs> yeah. And even then yeah. I still pray for them because yeah. I, I've been through dark times in my life and I've done stupid things and, and I have so much compassion because most of the times I did those things ignorantly. Um, mm. I didn't yeah. very often walk into things willingly yeah. Um, yeah. other than things like drinking alcohol or stuff like that. But yeah. um, but this techno sorcery sounds like our next show Uh, (laughs) yeah it's huge (laughs) yeah and i just had a guy reach out to me that wanted to do a show on ai the ai wars and i i think it's the same thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know yeah You, you can you can if you if you're not protected i think it's important to know about it Mm-hmm. Um, so it needs to be taught in in safety and it needs to be you need to know the boundaries you know yes. how far do I go and uh, allow and um <clears throat> so I, th- I think it's important to to have a place where people can 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 bring stuff but that it is safe that you right. know that this person is mature that they're able to put the boundaries down that there's intercession covering you know so, yeah, it's it's serious level stuff. You know, it is really, um, it is not it is not easy. It is not easy, um, but one needs to be pretty, uh, really wide awake, mm-hmm. and also, bloodline is bloodline. Let me tell you, Carmen, I have learned the depths of bloodline, and really cleaning up in that area. Um, because that's what they what they go to. And we can share a couple of examples as we go along, okay. um, you know, just so that people can be aware of how deeply uh, you are inspected by the enemy. Yeah, so as you're opening up your, your um, platform and you're inviting people in, thinking you're doing something wonderful for the world, sharing, you're actually doing the exact opposite of what it is that you hope you do. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, Carmen, if God has called you, um, we will bump our heads. 
which is we we always do. But that's how we learn, you know. That's yeah. how we learn. We bump our heads, and experience with God, and walking this journey um, has taught us bat- has taught us battle plan strategy has has made us awake. You know, you sleep with 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 your with your one eye open and you watch. Uh, so it's yeah, I, I do believe that this is a very important platform. I'll I'll never downplay what what you are doing um, and how you are helping to get the church to wake up and to give the survivors a place to hear. Um, but there are other people out there as well. I'm not alone. Yeah, um, it's pretty important, and we haven't had this ever. I mean, this is. This is something God opened up, um, and and I do believe this is His plan. But I do also believe that's why we need to work in teams. We are an army, um, and to go at this alone is dangerous. Yeah. So it's good to know if somebody's got your back, and if you are struggling, you know we go on the hot seat regularly, where we pray and see. Listen, did somebody put something on you? Um, you know, is there some sort of an attack? Um, and when we when we pick up pressure, um, you know, there'll be days that Roly he's sitting in the room next door and then he hears me all the time as I counsel and he's praying. And then, of course, when when he can hear the, you know, the, the missiles coming, then then he will he will rise up in war. So yeah. it is it you've got to have that backing. You can't do this alone. Right. And also to know, but how what could be the possible open doors? How can they get to me? Of course, my own bloodline, um, my covering of of who's with me, who's got my back. Um, you know, those kind of things. It's really, really key, really important. Yay. So I think I think Carmen, we have a lot of of material. Okay. I think well, we have go. a lot of stuff. Um that is available for people to draw from. A hundred percent. There's a pool. There's a whole big pool of knowledge that w- I have written down as fast as what I learned. And I'm still doing that. And that has been that has just been my heart. Always write down, write down, so people can get this information. And then I trust God to, to take it to people that will multiply yes, and take yes. it further than yes. what I could, you know. Yes. So that's my heart. Um, yeah. but so I think I think there's a lot out there. Yeah. And um I think your title was pretty interesting um when you shared it and said, <laughs> Well, let's go for it. So Well, it's so funny because I had re- recently bought a hat and it was a glow in the dark hat that had a fish that had a lure, that bioluminescent lure. And I looked it up and it's an angler fish and it is it's in the depths of the sea. It has translucent teeth, right? So it wow. it can bite without you seeing it coming. It has a bioluminescent lure, so the Whoa. other fish think it's it's light, right? Yeah. But it's actually yeah. going to get eaten. Wow! And so I was like, I think that fish would be the perfect fish to put on the, <laughs> the front of this. But um, I was glad you said why you can't walk away because um, that was the that, that was the question I had for you. Yeah. Was uh, yeah. how do people understand? Like once I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore, I would say I didn't have peace for another 10 days. And that's me working hard. Like I, yeah. I know what to do. And then yeah. I didn't have complete freedom for probably another three months after that. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. a long time for just interviewing is, some people. Yeah. And the thing is common, you've got to let the dust settle because you don't know what is still in the dust. Right. And that, that, that blocks you from seeing clearly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think it's pretty important to listen to God and only move when God says you you're ready to move. Yeah. Yes. That you yes. don't run ahead of God. So that that was very good. Yeah, that's well, another lesson you. that we need to learn, you know. Yeah. I mean, I it was a hard lesson because, you know, I'm I'm normal human. Like things are, look interesting or they're different or they're strange. Yeah. You know, I was interested yeah. in it and it it's it it can be very, very dangerous. So yeah. I did share, I made sure good. that you have sharing oh, capacity. Good. And right. um you can take it away from here. I am gonna step out for just a second. So go ahead and start sure. and I'll okay. be right back. Okay, good. Okay. So good evening to everybody. We 
super excited to uh, be with you tonight. And so those of you that are new, um, you can just see what is our email address. It's canaan at iafrica.com. And then um, uh, the, the website, you can download. There's so much material available. And then also what we shared the last time was that Roly has the Bible study group um, to, to help you to learn to read the Bible and to work through the Bible through the year. So we basically just started a new cycle. And so it's very easy to catch up. There's not too much. Um, the group has grown. We're over 100 already. It's really it's uh, amazing just how the numbers have, have grown. And so, yeah, we, we're pretty excited about that. And um, Roly's enjoying it. It's, it's, it's a challenge, but it's really good to, to get to know God's character and to know the word. Because once you've got the plumb line that is rooted and grounded in you, you so much easier can discern when there's deception. All right. So what we want to uh, talk about Here's uh, Carmen's fish. Uh, Carmen, that's a very interesting fish that you got there. And I think there's <laughs> such a deep lesson around this one. So you can't just walk away. Um, it's not possible. If you've been attacked, there's a reason why you've been attacked. We know God allows it and he allows it for a, a reason. And that is to teach us how to get up and start flexing our spiritual muscles. And so God, you then enroll in God's university. So you first start in, in primary school, and then you climb the ranks, and eventually you get to God's university as your ranking grows in the spirit. Um, so this, what we're going to do tonight is a, um, it's, it's, we're going to cover what is happening in the world today. What is going on in the world today with what had happened with Israel because as we have shared before, we have said that, um, you know, there is uh, there's this whole thing around, um, you know, Hamas has attacked Israel. But because we are tied to the same root, we are part of the same olive tree. We grafted into the same olive tree. So what happens to Israel will happen to us. What happens in the physical to Israel is going to happen in the spiritual to us. And so we need to understand this battle. This is the first time since Second World War that they have been attacked like this. And we need to know why. We need to understand the times. And God says that there were a, a group of people that studied the word and he, he commended them. And he said, because they studied the word, they could discern the times and the seasons. And God um, will reward us if we study his word and we studying what is going on in the season that we're living. Now, we know three years ago, we all, the whole world went through a very dark, deep time of, of not understanding of fear, tremendous fear. But through that, alarm clocks went off. Bells started to ring and God got our attention and the sleeping church started to wake up. And so um, it was it was pretty good to have us awake and alert and realize how easy it is to stop the whole world. Um, and and it was scary to realize that that's the control that they had over us. And so how do we discern what's going on because this battle that took place on the 7th of October this year with Israel when they were attacked and please hear our hearts we're not doing a political thing tonight at all this is not political this is spiritual this is out of the word of God and we need to understand um, who is Amalek and the spirit of Amalek is something that we're going to be fighting right till the end God warned us, this will be the battle that we will face right until the end. And so um, we just want to share some thoughts with you. And please, it's not political. We don't want to go there. Um, it's This is not 
uh, God's word is never political. God is, you know, you, Jesus is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He is everything we need is in him. His word is given us as loving instructions to follow. And so um, politically, we're not going to get anywhere. We've got to stick with God. And that is our message tonight. It is not political. It is really out of the word of God. It's a spiritual warfare message that we need to all understand. I, Can I, I interject I'm, here real quick? Sure, um, sure. Is, is, does it have anything to do with the synagogue of Satan? Yeah, it'll pro it'll probably have to do with the synagogue of Satan because that is where he will build his throne. Okay. And that's what Revelation tells us. There's going to be the synagogue of Satan. And okay. we know that it was in Second World War, it was in in um um but Germany, in Germany, in Berlin. So from there. Um, you know, they've been working a lot with the throne of Satan. Yes. So 100% correct, Carmen. Good for bringing that up. Okay, so I've asked Rayleigh to join in because this is his world as well, very much so. And uh, discerning and seeing what the word says and just saying, okay, where are we today in, in our walk in, in today's time in 2024, which is around the corner? Um, what is God expecting of us? What should we, we be looking out for? And what must be, we be awake for? So, Roly, maybe you can give some background. Okay, so I think you know, you've asked the question. You've, said, you've spoken about the hooks and what are the hooks and where are the hooks. And there, there are many hooks eventually at the end of the day. And we don't really need to or we don't particularly want to identify one. But what happens is in the story of Amalek is a spiritual principle which is brought out. And I think this is what the message is tonight, is rather to understand what that principle is and then be able from there to set your mind and to set your battle plan in action, to build your walls, to set up the perimeter so that you are able to be watchmen on the wall and to identify what is happening. And so in in in, in uh, First Corinthians, you get that verse that says, it's not the spiritual which is first, but the natural. And once you see the, the natural, you can understand what the spiritual dimension is that we're talking about. And so the reality is, if you look at the story of Amalek, you're going to find that God shows us in the story, as we go through the whole Bible, that there's a spiritual principle in place that the kingdom of darkness will be coming at us all of the time. The moment you set up and you declare that you're a son and a daughter of the covenant, you're born again. The moment you make that declaration, Satan and the kingdom of darkness in one or other fashion and form is going to be attacking you. And many people in the church have this idea that they don't have to do spiritual warfare, that they can walk away from things, that if they've had one battle, it's past and they can go and rest easy, that nothing else will happen after that, 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 the, uh, that Satan won't continue attacking them. But to the extent that you set up yourself as a beacon of light, as something which is outstanding and standing out for, for the people to see. You know, they, that verse that speaks, your, your lamp is on the hill and you must be shining your light. We're talking about Hanukkah now, which is about your light being outside that people can see. And the moment you set that up, you must understand this story teaches you that Amalak, who is a, a symbol or a, a, an, an image, a, a type of Satan, will be there, and therefore we have to be right. And that story starts off in the book of um, of Exodus, where Moses has just left, the, the, uh, left Egypt, and he comes out of Egypt, and what happens is we find immediately there's an attack by Amalek. It's called Amalek. And I want you to keep that name in your, in your mind, but understand that, that that name has to change over time. And in your head, eventually you have to understand that we're talking about a, a division of Satan, a image of Satan, a, a an alternative name for Satan. But Amalek comes to fight with Moses. And what we find there, if you read the story, you find the following. There is no reason for attack. They are moving out of Egypt. They're on their way to the promised land. In other words, they're born again and they're moving to where God wants them to be. There is absolutely no reason for attack. They've done nothing wrong. They haven't you know, created any reason for, for antagonizing the enemy. 
And what we find is important here is to read into the story is what was the target of the attack? And in that target, you'll find these are the people that get attacked. It's the children, it's the woman, and the aged. And so we're looking at a physical dimension, woman, children, and aged. But what's important now is to understand why would that be? What would the reason be for attacking this generation of people? So now what happens is God shows us as you go through the Bible that this attack gets repeated again and again. And, and God clearly shows us by giving the same name to the attack, that we can identify it's the same spirit. It's exactly the same model of attack that gets made. So at Amalek comes over and over again. Remember the story of David. He's gone off to fight a battle. The woman and children are left behind in the city, and Amalek comes to take the woman and the children. You see the same pattern being repeated. You'll find the same story with Paul. And eventually you'll find the same story with Esther. So you see they're repeating Saul and, and Esther. You'll find the same story being repeated over and over. Now what happens is, and this is the important part, and this is where that, that, that verse I gave you about the natural and the spiritual comes into play. We have to look at current circumstances and situations today that are happening around us to see if we can identify the spirit operating. So, for example, in Nazi Germany, at the time of the Holocaust, the people weren't called Amalek. But what happens is they fight with the spirit of Amalek. So if you look at the stories of the Holocaust and you see them getting on the train to go, what you find is when the train comes to the camp, the children and the women are sent to the gas chambers and the men that are old and can't work are sent to the gas chambers. And the men and the women that are reasonably strong are kept to go and work until they die. Again, when we see Hamas, this attack that happens in Israel now, and it's not about people. I'm making you understand. It's not about a nation. It's not about the Germans or about the Palestines. It's about the spirit of Amalek, which is happening here. Hamas in Hebrew means violence. But if we look what happened on the 7th of October, we see exactly the same fight. We see children, women, the people that are unable to defend themselves are being attacked. In other words, a normal war would be one army of soldiers against another army of soldiers, and you have equal opposition, people that can defend themselves, can fight. But this is not that. And so we must understand that if we look at the circumstances around us, we must understand there's a spirit that's operating. And so although that's in the physical, what we want to do is turn it around and make and move it into a spiritual domain. Just speak about that. Uh, in Second World War, when they did the uh, oh, okay, the court case. Oh, money reminds me when the court case happened at the end of the time, uh, when they had that big court case to judge the Germans that were involved. There was a guy called Strickler, and when he was uh, sentenced to uh, to death, he raised his arm in a salute and he said, uh, "Purim 1946." In other words, there was a clear connection with the story of of Esther and Amalek. And so this is important. We must understand. Now, we're not focusing on Germany and, and not on the Palestine, but on what has actually happened and the mode of attack. Because the, the church generally has now come to a place where we believe that because we're born again, we're safe and God will protect us, etc. But we're not, we're not watching on the wall looking out for the spirit and the way it's going to attack. And why these people attack the children, the women and the aged is critical because it gives us an idea of the warfare that the kingdom of darkness has ha that has put into place. And so if you look at the next slide, it says, so why does Amalek persistently try to kill, maim, and destroy? It's a continual attack over and over. So when we see it in the warfare, when we see it in the physical domain, Nazis, uh, Amalek, Saul, and all of these, we're looking at a physical battle, but we're now going to transfer this into something that we understand spiritually. And so in Exodus 17, verse 14, you find this verse and it says, And the Lord said to Moses, write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua. And this is the part I want you to, to li listen to carefully. That I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek under the heavens. Now this is God talking. God says he will blot out the memory of Amalek under the heavens. So what we understand now is that Amalek is something to do with Satan and God is the one that's going to destroy him. So what we must realize, as today, today, where you, wherever you're living, the spirit of Amalek is coming against us. 
And so from that, we start to get this connection now. Amalak is a manifestation of Satan. Right? Amalak is a manifestation of Satan. So it's a spiritual battle that we have to fight. Whoever attacks God's throne equals Amalak. Now, when I say attacks God's throne, the minute you're born again, the minute you start a program like you've done, Carmen, or any other form of, of, of or any other mechanism of, of, of reaching out to people and teaching people about God's word, you become a part of God's throne. And the minute you become a part of God's throne, the minute you have a ministry in any fashion or form, you need to understand that Amalek will come against you. And so we will have, these people will attack. You might not have an open door specifically in your life today. You might just be someone that's going out doing a good work. But Amalek will come against you because you represent God's throne. Okay. So in Exodus, what we saw the story of Moses and Joshua is actually a re-implementation of God's model. You see, when God takes them out of Egypt, what he's busy trying to do is he's trying to reinstate the Garden of Eden. Now, I want to show you the two world models. The first world model is freedom without control. So when Adam and Eve make the mess in the Garden of Eden, they get kicked out of, out of uh, the Garden of Eden and they free. They have freedom. They are free to do what they like. But there's no control. There's no set of laws. There's no framework on how do we live. There's no framework of what a society should look like. And what happens is we find Cain, and he becomes the example of a model where there's freedom, but there's no control. So people that tell you that we want to be free, but we don't want to have God's laws, we want to be free, we're just under grace, are living in the world where Cain operates, where vengeance, murder, and rape will follow. The second model I want to talk to you about is the one where we have control, but no freedom. And that's the model that Pharaoh puts in place. And Pharaoh comes and he says, I'm taking away your freedom. I'm making sure there's control, there's, re there's rules. And so what you find in this model is slavery and oppression. So those are the two models that work in the world. That's the models that Satan wants to have operating because in one or other fashion, he's in control. But God's got a different model. God's got a model which says, I'm going to look out for you. And what I want in that model is one where there's a covenantal relationship. There's one olive tree. There's only one body of Messiah. And really the model that God has is taking us back to the Garden of Eden. That's the model that he wants us to be living in. That's how he wants us to operate. And the, this is what I said to start with. The minute you have some or other ministry, some or other organization like this, this channel that you have, Carmen, or full-time ministry, anything like that, the moment you have something that reflects this model of God, then you must expect that Amalek will come to attack you. And the, the attack is going to be in those two or those three domains of children, woman, or the aged. And why is that important? Because that's what takes the, your knees out. That's what makes you cripple. That what, that's what makes you fall over. And so it's important to understand this. So the purpose of Amalek, and here's what I'm going to describe for you, is to destroy God's plan and his authority. He wants to take away God's plan. He wants to reduce God's authority down to nothing. And so the question is really, Moses just come out of Egypt. You know, you're thinking about this and you're saying, gee, but, you know, God's delivered them. He brought them out. There's been this amazing story of Passover. They're coming out into the wilderness. They're on their way to the promised land. They're going to this place where they're going to represent God fully. And so you have to ask yourself, was there an open door? And in fact, there was, and we'll see this now. So think about this, and, and you need to put yourself now into one of these boxes as I go through this. So when they left Egypt, Israel was a picture of the faithful church, the church of Philadelphia. They were reborn. They were fully focused. They were going to a new place. They wanted to represent God completely. In fact, when they get to Mount Sinai and God says to them, will you marry me? They say, yes, we will. So they, they were a representation of the faithful church. They were fully committed. They're there for a reason. However, as soon as they get in the wilderness and there's a little bit of pressure, there's no water and the food is a little bit scarce, they become the picture of the lukewarm church. They start to cry out and to moan. They become the church of the Laodicea. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm lost for a moment. Good, thank you. Yeah. They become the church that moans and performs, and that becomes the open door. That's the place. So we need to understand that as Christians, if we're standing here, if, even in my house of my own, or I'm in a ministry or whatever I'm doing, the moment I start to mur murmur, to moan, to groan, to start to fight, I don't have to get into huge sin. I don't have to get into anything catastrophically bad. Bingo. The moment there's this kind of, of, of murmuring and groaning and moaning and unhappiness and, and you know jealousy and envy and all these little things, the moment that comes in, we become this lukewarm church. And then ex and exactly what happens after that, as soon as we lukewarm, then Amalek will come to attack. And his purpose is to turn us into a dead church, into the church of Sardis. He wants us to, to reject God, to come to the place where we don't want to serve God anymore. We have a name on our door. We say we're the church of X, Y, Z, or we're such and such a ministry. But we don't want to disturb anyone. And so we become dead to the world. We have no power. And, and it's when we understand that, that we realize that that's why the enemy is so successful in making all these attacks against us physically and mentally and emotionally. And that is why some, something like the SRA kingdom is so strong today. Because the church has moved down these ranks and they're no longer in full force. They're no longer the yeah. church of Philadelphia. Yeah. We're one of these other churches that are battling to get everything right. We're allowing Jezebel in or whatever it is. But we're not the church of Philadelphia. Mm. And because of that, we don't look around and see what is happening to us. Mm. So now I want to transform those physical things because it's not about Hamas or the Nazis or Amalek, actually. Exactly. It's, we must look at the spiritual principles that go with it. And this is why it's so important. And because we as a church are not standing up, and we're not making a shout for our children. We've let our children come into this world. But we, under, we don't understand that Satan, in this particular case, every time there's an attack against the next generation, it's, it's Amalek. And whether it's in social media, you look at social media and you see what happens there. Look at the how bullying of children has grown exponentially since social media has come into play. Look how sex trafficking has come into play since social media has come into play. Look at the education system and the nonsense they're teaching our children about evolution and all sorts of other things. And, you know, you can be a boy or you can maybe you're not a boy. So the, we must look at this and see the attack of Amalek has now become something real. It's transformed from a physical battle of bullets and swords into a new battleground. Mm -hmm. And that battleground means that every one of the children that has been put into this category, that are being forced into looking at the social media, into the education system, what's happening is Satan is, cre is creating a, a fertile ground where the other things that can happen, like SRA, can be manifested and easily transported into it and made more and more and more strong because we don't have the foundation anymore. And the church is not protecting the children. And so if you look at the next one, it's the woman. Sorry, can I just um, interject here with the children? Um, it was very interesting. They, they were just saying that um, there was... In, in Manchester, a, while, a couple of years ago, there was a attack on the young people. It was pre-teens. And they were at some other, like a party or something, and they had this woman doing the show, and she was blatantly, in detail, explaining the worst kind of porn and oh my gosh. Uh, sex positions and all sorts of things. And so these children were exposed to this girl. I mean, the parents dropping the children were exposed to this lady. That was now, this is what they heard in their ears. Yeah. And then in their midst, a guy comes in with a gun, <clears throat> with, a, with, a, with a bomb full of nails and, and, and screws and all sorts of things, which he detonated amongst them. And that's how they died. Oh my gosh. Um, listening to this woman's voice, can you see how the children have been broken down and how the enemy has infiltrated, just walked into our midst and he's shooting like with a machine gun wildly at our children and hitting them? 
And and the other thing, Carmen, was I don't know if you know, but part of there was a party that was going on on the seventh of um, of October in Israel at the border there, and it was yeah, a it was party. a music and festival, right? That's it, and they had a huge Buddha. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there was a huge Buddha. So I mean, you know, already we we we've got idolatry. So what has happened is we've become slack. We're not the watchman on the walls. Yes. We're not listening and checking what are our children listening to and who are they exposed to. Um, a sad story that happened here in, in our country was a father with a little boy, his own son, and brought home a, a, a friend to come for a sleepover. It was, you know, play dates and then a sleepover and um when they woke up the next morning, this little guy who came in as the friend with a sleepover was in the father's bed. Oh, gosh. Dead. Oh, gosh. He had killed him in his frenzy, whatever, doing his thing, and that little boy died. So, I mean, what a, you know, that father should have been the watchman on the walls protecting right. his own child. <clears throat> and here they bringing in an innocent little playmate for a sleepover. And what I'm saying to you is even today, we can't just let our children sleep over. No, no. I it tell everyone. I agree. It is wait. It isn't worth. Even if they're great people, it isn't worth it. No, no. it's just when you weigh them out, it's just not yeah. worth it. You yeah. know, I mean, unless it's like your family and you know them and you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, of course. It's, yeah. it's yeah. different. But yeah, I even had a very, very good friend who, when I was shooting a movie with my kids, um, my daughter was the lead in it. And uh, the producer was a very good friend. I've known him for years. And there was a day that I couldn't get Carly to the, you know, set on time myself. And so I was trying to rearrange things and he's like, well, I'll just pick her up. And I said, no, you won't. He was so offended. Sure. But yeah. I said, I said, there, there's no reason to do that. And mm -hmm. instead I had my son and his friend take her um, yeah. and it worked out perfect. But it's just, yeah. you know, and to this day, he will tell you and he has told so many people that story because he sees the benefit as a father and as, yeah. you know, whatever. And he yeah. did say, you know, it hurt. You know, it's like a woman when, you know, a guy gets in the elevator and you get like kind of like on guard and yeah. they're a good guy, but they feel yes. bad, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And, and don't but you I think, think what... <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. A couple of things. Like I remember being a kid and listening to the story of Adam and Eve and saying, mm -hmm. Okay, there's one darn tree. It's the tree of good and evil. You got to yeah. stay away from it. How hard yeah. could that be? But yeah. as an adult who uh, partakes in the apple, sometimes against, you know, my will as far as, you know, I really don't want to do it, but I find myself doing it or whatever mm. it is, you mm. see how how powerful the world is with that Canaanite choice. Yeah. I also did look up Amalek and Amalek is actually the descendants of Esau. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's and Jacob so he, and Esau, I guess yeah. it's the sellout. It's the one who would even give up his whole yeah. birthright for yes. food. One, one yes. meal. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Flesh, flesh just dominates it. Ah. Yeah. But I think what to learn here are the three places where he attacks. Um, you know, where the spirit attacks. And so we've got to protect the children. We've got to put more boundaries in place um, and explain to them and just be hands on. We can't just put them in front of a TV and leave them. You know, you it's just you can't leave them with games and and think they're going to be fine because they're not. And so th there's such a serious attack, um, you know, with our children. And if we look what happened in the natural to Israel now that day with the you know and the children that were taken hostage, it was it was just horrific. Okay, let's go to the next one, Rob. So the next one is woman, and if you look at this, if you come to destroy the woman, then what you're dealing with is the nurturing ability of woman, the ability to be compassionate, to understand. They the people that have the emotional intelligence for circumstances, and so what you do if you look at and these are the sort of hooks that are being put in place. 
changing women's roles, transgender, women don't have to ba mean baby, make babies anymore. Women that have babies can have the babies looked after by someone else. So what we're showing you is the hooks that, that come into play right now are very far down the road from the actual thing that's going to be done later on. In other words, we, you know, we tend to think that there was a, it was a sin or it was a, some decision that people made when they were 20 or 30 to go into idolatry or whatever it is. But the reality, what we're showing here, the, the spirit of Amalek comes to put in place this, this, this uh, fertile field at a very young age and comes very quickly to women to take away their womanhood and to replace their ability to represent the, 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 the woman, the female part of God, which is compassionate, merciful, and et cetera, et cetera. And, and once that's gone, then what we have is a generation of people that don't understand it. And what then comes is we have people that think the only thing that's important in life is me. I am the only one that's important. And what we have now is so if you've destroyed the children and you've destroyed the woman, then the last one you look at is to destroy the agent. All right. I just want to stop here with the woman. Um, it was very interesting. We were sort of um, we, we, we were on a road trip um, this week. It just we had to do some business, you know, with the office down in Cape Town. And um, we could listen to news now and then, you know, and one of the snippets that we got was the Prime Minister of Israel mentioned, and I mean, he was really quite strong when he came across, and he said, when a woman gets raped, um, what happens in the spirit world is the woman and the land um, play the same role. They birth, the land births. Um, you know, there's there's a specific role of, of the land. And so the woman um, in the land bring the babies. So they bring, you know, the, the like the earth produces and brings forth. So the woman produces and brings forth babies. And so when you rape a woman, you are removing that ability. Prophetically, you are doing something prophetically to the land. And the nation. And the nation by raping the woman, and, and allowing, I mean, it, it, yeah, not having laws, not enforcing oh, laws, yeah. My, oh my and, gosh! And also, the, the how do you treat women? Now I know that we did this that that whole thing with you, uh, where Roly spoke on the lies that women believe <clears throat> about themselves, and this is this is part of it as well because the women are degraded they're not allowed education they're not allowed to drive they not allowed you know you know how the women are treated there um in the mindset of the Amalek spirit the woman is absolutely degraded um and and seen as worthless you know and all she can do is make babies and cook food and and, and whereas we know what God says about us, and we know that it's a lot more than that. And so for them to have come in and raped a woman. Now, Roly was watching the, the day that it happened. And the next day, um, you know, we we, we did a, a um, one of the feasts, Feast of, of Tabernacles. Oh, nice. Um, we, yeah, we got back and then we got into the news and we started to watch. And Roly actually saw the video recording of the woman that had been raped. And mm -hmm. he was so upset. He was so disturbed. It was horrific. And then afterwards to say, oh, no, they didn't rape the woman. You know, to lie blatantly, huh. um, to downplay what they actually did. So this thing about destroying the children, destroying the woman, and the woman is, is the one that has got the emotional IQ, and the one that builds to connection to the heart. She's the mommy that that teaches the child, how do I, I connect with my heart? And so if she's removed, if that role is removed, you become hard. You know, those that didn't have mothers that nurtured them can speak. Right. From not being nurtured, you, you become hard. You hardened your heart. Yes. And so how much... Um, you know, you've got you've got such a a um, deficit in your in your uh, sorry, Ro, in your um, 
my, my feet, my hands talk. You have such a deficit in your upbringing, you know, and in your nurturing abilities as an adult then later when you be, you become a parent. So it's, and it's the role of the mother. So the woman, you know, just to see what, why is Amalek going for the woman and for the children? Right, the next But, be, but oh, before sorry. we go on, let's just give another comment. And this is, and this shows you how the world thinks these days. And, and I mean, the reality is as soon as you be become a son and a daughter of the covenant, as soon as you are reborn, you really are accepting God's principles of life. You know, God comes along and says he is life. He creates life and we should be caring for life. And, and all of the commandments that you have really in many ways are about preserving life, you know, mm -hmm. about looking after it. And so when you when you look at women and and you know whether it's it's someone from India or America or anywhere in the world doesn't matter what their color is what their race is what their belief system is whether they're into idolatry it doesn't really matter what they are the reality is they are still created as women in God's image and what 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 should happen is that when something like that happens to a woman the, the the church should be standing up straight away and saying this is unacceptable. It, it really doesn't matter who they are, you know, which from which generation and which which land the woman come. Now, what happened was very interesting. Is fifty days after that seventh of October, the United Nations women that are so supposed to be representing women that are raped, in other words, anti, you know, speaking against it, yes. etc., had still not spoken out against the unacceptable nature of what happened. And it shows you how far away we've come from God's yardstick, from his plumb line, from his yes. value system. Yes. You know, and, and it's really, it's it, and that shows you how women's value has mm. been devalued, mm. how it's been mm. removed from this world. Mm. And so you can see that Amalak, the spirit of Amalak, has got us to a place where we don't care. And it's really mm. crazy to yeah. think yeah. like that. Sad. I used sad. to always say, you know, be careful out there in the whatever wild, kind of like um, the old Batman movies where he would say, you know, Robin would say, holy, whatever the situation was. And that's how I use be careful out there in the, you know, trans wild, in the pride wild, in the whatever wild. And l lately, I find myself more than anything wanting to raise people's standards. So I'm yeah. like, yeah. my new tagline is raise your standards, raise your standards. Yeah. Right? They have become yeah. so low. And you know how yeah. it came to me was I've been watching old fashioned films and the decorum and the amount of respect and the way they dressed has really inspired me in realizing how far I've come down, you know, from those generations. And I'm like, okay, time to raise my standards, you know, mm. um, learn more, do more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And so the last one is they attack the aged. And so what you can say is, you know, anyone that's gone past their sell by date should uh, disappear into the uh, into the next <laughs> world uh, because they're now eating up all the vegetables that other people need and what have you. <laughs> but the reality is that God has a special place and a very special role for the aged. In fact, he talks about leaders that are gray haired, people that are in that mm. state. And there's a reason for it. It's because they have got experience. They've banged their heads against uh, walls a couple of times. They've learned that something should be done in a certain way. They have a certain wisdom. They see circumstances. They have insight. You know, and 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 the whole story about Amalek is, is saying, this is a physical thing. Can I can I see the spiritual lesson with it? And it comes when you're older because you you you've gone through things and you've started to say that what I see is not necessarily what what I should be looking at. What is the message behind the message? And, and the reality is older people have the ability to see legacy. Mm -hmm. They are not there trying to achieve something for themselves anymore. They're not trying to be the CEO of the company or the, you know, they're no, those goals are not longer part of their life. Now they're looking and they're saying, I, I see this kind of attribute in someone. I can build into it. They, they're looking for a legacy. They're looking for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so if you remove the aged, you take away all the experience. Mm -hmm. You take away all the wisdom. Mm -hmm. You take away all the insight. You lose everything. And now think about it. We've taken away the youth. 
And now we take away the old. Mm -hmm. And what have you got left? You've got nothing left for God's vision of the future. And family. So you can see Satan's mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. And this is the important thing. We must not. And, and these are these things that we're describing for you today become the, 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 the field that becomes the root, that becomes the hook for mm -hmm. whatever Satan wants mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So the things that Satan do, we can list them now. We can get you into a sin or we can get you into a generational curse or whatever it is. But these are the field. This is the place where the harvest is set in place. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to understand what Amalek is, because we should be looking out at this level. Because once you clean the field of all the, the rubbish and the stones, you can plant a new harvest. And that's why we have to be so focused on it and why it's so important. And so Amalek comes up and he ends up having a direct attack on us. And we make this statement for you. Don't focus on Amalek. It's not a nation. It's not a people group. It's, it's described like that for us in the Old Testament so that we can in we can visit, we can get a vision, we can put our hands on it, we can feel it, we can touch it. But it's not a people, it's not a nation, it's a spirit from the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to reappear in our generation in a new form. And so if you think about it, what is Amalek's demonic agenda? It's to murder the message of hope, to destroy family values, to destroy marriages, most of all, to destroy legacy, to make sure there's not a next generation, to represent a false prophetic message, to teach people to care only for themselves. The world is in this world now. It's for me and my. Only the strongest survive. The theory of evolution, only the strongest survive, has become the mantra of most people today. I must get to the top. I must be the best. I must be the strongest. And so you can see the seed has been sown so carefully that whatever Satan's idea is on top of that is immediately a hook that takes you down some or other dark road. You want to talk to that? No. Okay. So how do we defeat Amalek? This is really Amanda's part. How do we defeat oh. Amalek? <laughs> <laughs> don't I'm slap so, amanda yeah, um I'm, but I'm before so you move on um sure. really just because like i like to make things as simple as possible and sometimes they're wrong but uh, it just helps people wrap their heads around it if i was describing jezebel i would say very narcissistic very controlling ahab is the codependent how would you if you were going to describe amalek or amalek or whatever it is um how how would you sum it up really short Sure. I think Amalek is a spirit different to Jezebel and to those people. See, I think what 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 you describe with Amalek, it, it's the seed, it's the it's the field that 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 Satan has put in place. Okay. To it's like a template. Allow to a template. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. He goes in and he and he takes the children, for example, and he teaches them evolution. And we 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 I can maybe be a boy or maybe a girl. He teaches these things away from the plumb line. He takes the woman and he takes away their 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 desire to to represent the 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 nurturing and the compassion. So it's like a foundational spirit that flows across, trying to remove the godly imprint that there is for the for us, God. the image of God for yeah. us. He takes yeah. that Lowering away. Lowering the standards. Yeah. And then, yes, and, then that's on, good. and then on top of that, what happens is we have the Jezebel and the Ahabs, mm. and those become the people that use this field. Sure. In a specific way to cause damage. They become the instrument of the hook that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And and so what you have is if I'm in that field now, and let's say I'm a father that is all messed up. And on top of all of this, I've got this wrong foundation. Now I'm in Freemasonry or I've been abused or something. Now I come along and I take it further because I've got a fertile ground to play mm -hmm. in. Are you yep. with me? Um, so yes, it's really 100%. a foundational fight rather yeah. than a than an individual. Yeah. So like principalities, but I think plumb yeah. line removal yeah. is yeah. really good yeah. because that yeah. boils down 100% education, politics. Mm. Uh, you're literally removing the standard of of yeah. what should be the benchmark. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And now, and now yeah. if you and now if you have a church that teaches some funny teachings. You know about whatever it is. You know it doesn't matter. Some of the teachings we hear today are really un un unbiblical. 
what happens is they support this field mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of no foundation. And so what you should have, you should have a church that teaches family values. Marriages are, 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 are for a reason. They should be there. We should be strong on these sort of principles. And any church that sort of comes with a compromise mm -hmm. is playing back into the field of Amalek. Unless I'm taking a very strong point and saying, this is what God's word says. The moment I don't do that, I, I end up supporting the, this field at the bottom here. So any church that wants to say that, for example, abortions can happen under certain circumstances, if what 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 the minute you go there, you're breaking down the plumb line and you're actually feeding the, 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 the spirit of Amalek. Thank you so much for that clarity. Yeah. Um, Carmen, I'm sorry I didn't add a scripture, um, but it's the, the, it's Exodus 17 verse 16 is the one that I sent you um, on WhatsApp when we were chatting around this theme. And it's I think it's probably the most important one. I didn't put at the end, but I'm going to read it. And it's oh, I was going to say, I can pull it up for you. I'm glad okay. you have it. Okay. Go ahead. No, but if you've if you've got it and we can put it in print. No, I I'm saying oh, I could okay. I could pull it up from WhatsApp and read it. Yeah. But if you have yeah. it, go ahead. Yeah. So the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Oh my gosh. Which That's means chilling. that we will walk with Amalek until the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Which explains all the misery. Because as you were describing that scene with the bomb with the screws and the stuff, I, I literally look out over the landscape of social media and, and things, and I feel like I just see people getting hit and they don't even know they're getting yeah. nailed, screwed, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it's horrifying. Yeah, absolutely. And so what, what we see here is that God is going to have the war. So he's going to, within each generation, he will raise up a remnant. He will raise up those that are faithful, those that are the, 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 the warm church, the church that, that, you know, when you come to the Lord the first time and you're born again, and it's that experience of coming out of Egypt and you're coming into, you're on your way to the promised land, you're moving through the wilderness but then what happens is the wilderness experiences are hard mm -hmm. and people get tired and they go and sit along the side of the road and they become lukewarm and they lose their zeal. They mm -hmm. lose their fire. They, um, they start to compromise. They, they, you know, in the beginning, it's like, oh, it's sold out for God. I'm, um, you know, I'm um, God's word and that's it. No, nothing. And then suddenly they start going into gray areas and and then they become this lukewarm church and then eventually they become the dead one. You know, then then they lose everything. And, and that's why the word says it's not those that start the race, but it's those that finish. Persevere. It's, it's those that push through. And, you know, I've seen ministries where they start good. They start clean they start strong they start really running for god and then you know the compromise comes and 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 the the lukewarmness comes and they're trying to trying to make the anointing you know make uh, to to generate but it's not from god it's mm -hmm. it's man made and and then they they've just lost the ground and it, the sad thing is is to see them when they get old and I, I sat with pastors that went into drugs. Wow. And then, and I know how they preached. I know how they started the race. I know when they started, they were on fire for God. Right. It was one way, you know, and it was running for God and they were so excited. And then they started to, you know, come with a, with a, with a, with a deal, with a bribe, with a, you know, somebody offers them money and they take it. And it's little by little. And that's how the spirit of Amalek works. Right. He he doesn't come up front because he knows you're going to fight him, but he but it's the little things, you know, it's and then when he comes with this attack. And so God is telling us that in every generation we will fight Amalek. There is no other way. We can't sidestep this. We will be fighting this war. 
and the attack will be against our children and the woman and the elderly because they are pivotal to God's image of taking a generation through to the next legacy. generation for the legacy. So, um, yeah, this is, so it's Exodus 17, verse 16. And I want to encourage everyone to do a study, yeah. do a study on the spirit of Amalek and start to see, okay, Father, what, what, what can I learn? Where has Amalek come into my life? Um, have I started to compromise. open up and compromise, you know, for, for the spirit of Amalek? Am, am I, um, you know, have I guarded my children or have I allowed my children to go down the garden path with Satan? You know, are, are they into games and all sorts of things? And, you know, like I was listening to the children in um, Japan and, and China where they, they've got the gaming, you know, all the gaming and how these children are so hooked and they wear nappies and um, because they don't want to waste time going to the loo, you know, it's, it is, <laughs> sorry, but oh it's true. Oh my gosh, I hadn't heard that one. I can't believe my yeah. son hasn't told me that because he's, he's into some of those games, but not, yeah. I mean, he has a life, but yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. No, it's, it can really swallow you up, you know, and, and so, and then they say, if the children get involved, I mean, this was on the news, if, if the children get swallowed up by this and they get addicted, then they've got clinics where the children can go to, to then get help. But then as soon as they've got the help, they go back, you know, so. Well, and is, then I've, um, come, I've become so suspicious of anything that's set up to help because yeah. I just have seen rehab yeah. center after rehab center that will absolutely destroy somebody rather than make them better. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. it, and I have seen good ones. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, just be yeah. very discerning. Um, I Absolutely. had a, I had a yeah. friend who was getting her daughter out of a cult and the group she hired to help actually made things worse. Oh, and, and so you just have to be really careful out there. And yeah. that's why like w I, people have a big problem with isolation. I think this is something that mental health has done is they made people feel like, oh, if I isolate, I'm depressed. There's such a thing as productive isolation. Look at Christ, 40 yeah. days, right, yeah. in the desert. Yeah. How can you hear Christ if you aren't alone? It's mm -hmm. much harder to do. I mean, yeah. it can happen, yeah. but but it's much harder to do. But if you're alone and it's productive time, like prayer yeah. or whatever, it's totally yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the uh, points on how do we actually defeat Amalek, who's in the natural, he's called Amalek in, 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 in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, it's just a manifestation, a physical right. manifestation of Satan. Um, but his attack is still the same. This is the way. And, you know, I was just thinking now, talking bloodline, and you see if you if you remove the older people, then they're not there to repent of and deal with their history, which means then your your women who are going to bear forth the children are going to carry the demonic seed and the demonic package of bloodline, and they pass it on to the children. And then the children are caught because they've received this parcel, you know, which just gets passed on down the generation. So basically, this attack of Amalek is really a bloodline you know, if you really look at it, it's yeah, it's yeah. generational curses. Yeah, because Roly mostly talked about the good side of elders. There's also elders yes. that are grumpy and narcissists yeah. that have gotten worse and OCD yeah. that have gotten worse. And yes. and really, to me, it's all manifesting. I, you know, those are just labels. Um, yeah. But but tainted blood is a big deal. And yeah. and to be able to take care of and help your parents in their last days, if you're capable of it, yes, you yes. can clear so much if yeah, you absolutely. do it right. It's a yeah. huge challenge though, when you have a very um, <laughs> special needs elderly person. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, it is really. That, that may be so, but I mean, think about this now. How? What has the world happened? You know, we spoke about the attack against the children and the woman and the elderly, but you think how the world has changed when it's so focused on itself. Yeah. You know, it's all about me and my and I, and I'm busy. Now, go and look how many older people 
they get to 70 and they maybe got cochetinis or something, they get put in an old age home yep. and they never get visited. Yep. The world system, ha that's what that's what Amalek has done. He's taken those mm -hmm. old people out. Yes. And and even, even if they're a little bit difficult, the point is they still have wisdom and experience. Mm -hmm. And if we prepare to work through it, we can get it. But what we've done is we've removed them from the society entirely. Mm -hmm. And now nobody goes to visit them, so they get more and more unhappy. Mm -hmm. But right. you, you can see the way our, our, our world system has, 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 has changed mm -hmm. and putting these people there is that we're actually losing it. So Satan, we, we think we're doing a good deed putting them in old age home. Satan is sitting smiling because he knows that they're now useless. They can't oh, do Oh, and the drugs that are pushed, mm. the drugs yeah. that are pushed are insane. Oh, yeah. I was talking to a woman yeah. who is a nurse at an elderly home, and, and she is like flabbergasted and she was talking about some sort of exchange between freemason that was like right next door and certain drugs and i'm like how does this even happen it's in canada so i don't know but it, it's it's unbelievable to me but mm -hmm. i will say um so for instance my dad's in a rehab center and um my sister sees him you know two to three times a week i see him three to four times a week um he is pretty much watched but i would say most are only seen on the weekends some the, you know their families aren't even in the same town mm -hmm. so they see them like christmas or whatever um one of the things that has been kind of interesting is watching my dad give life to other people there so mm -hmm. it sure. is it is kind of an interesting um situation yeah. but some people are too difficult to have around <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. It is true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you want to share? Yeah. Well, I think we've we've learned how to write petitions. And so it's very important to petition about this and ask God, where did we miss uh, discerning Amalek in our lives? And open our eyes, Lord. And where have we been blindfolded? to the activity of Amalek in our families. Um, you know, where has he been able to get a foot in the door and and we didn't discern him? And um, so the whole thing is shine your light, Lord, because in your light, we see light. And then uh, be prepared for battle because it is a spiritual warfare. Um, <clears throat> and God says he will fight. Um, and just know that you're not alone. He He is fighting Amalek. That's his promise that from generation to generation, Amalek will be part of our warfare. Uh, we've got to know who the spirit is and we must discern because this is so important for God that he, he's written so, so much about Amalek and he's telling us it's not just in the time of Moses, it's in today's time too that we are going to be uh, facing this and that is what we saw so clearly with what happened um, and it's the spirit, it's not the people group, it's the spirit that is possessing the people that is doing the damage. And then intercede for those in battle. I think this is so important that we 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 must be part of an army. We must be part of a a prayer group. A um, you know, if if you in a difficult time that you can cry out and say, please stand around me and um, let's just pray, you know, and um, cover me in prayer. Uh, I've got to deal with this. I've got a di difficult counseling case and we're struggling to get through or whatever. But it's the whole thing is is community um, to understand I'm part of a body. I'm not alone. Um, it is so key because I'll only get healed and I'll get stronger if I'm part of a community, if I'm part of God's family. Um, and then, of course, to build an altar of worship. And so, um, you know, to to realize that you raise your hands in absolute surrender um, and when you worship, you, you, you giving your heart, you giving your voice, you you. And it's in that worship that you build um, the the relationship, the bridge between, you know, the, the, the spiritual bridge between you and God. And um, it's not that God can't function without it it's you can't function without <laughs> worship in your life so it's 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 a strength it's there yeah. is really such an anointing 
um, if you've got this altar of worship, sure. because that's where you go to. You go to minister as a priest uh, in, in the living tabernacle of God. You go to the altar and you service the altar. If you don't service the altar, you know uh, the fire goes out. And God says, don't let the fire go out. So your prayers need to be continually placed upon the altar. And inside of you, you have the menorah, which is the God, the light of God, his word that is burning because you are the tabernacle of God. And so that that oil should for, always, always be burning. You want to add something? Mm -hmm. No, no, done. You're going to pray. I would for like that. to add one thing to that. Um, I think some people, at least people that I've talked to, um, they believe that they're so beaten down that they don't have the strength to build an altar of worship. And I would encourage them to just try because God heals you in, in the process, yeah. right? So I'm yeah. still being healed of things as I move forward and accomplish other things with God. Also, yeah. Holy Spirit knows what we need to have prayed for us, <laughs> yes. which yes. is complete comfort when you are exhausted and yes. beat down and yeah. at, 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 when you, you think you have no purpose here, when you're really wrong, it's just yeah. God or just Satan or Amalek telling you you don't mm. have purpose. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also, um, you can just lie and listen to praise and worship music and just let your spirit mm -hmm rise with the wind of the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. and that you're going to feel so different when, when you've done that just to be in God's presence, but do it. That's the most important thing. Even if, if you feel terrible, um, you know, just do it um, and start to tap into that anointing. It's good. Yep. So Rodi's going to pray. Good. Yay. All right. Is that thank good? You. Okay. Father, we thank you that we can come this evening to you. We can stand before you. We thank you, Father, we can enter into your courts of prayer. We thank you, Father, we realize that uh, as the body of Messiah, we have tended to overlook some of these stories from the Old Testament. We've treated them as something in the past without understanding the spiritual significance, without understanding that Satan has a plan and that that plan is designed to pull down your kingdom and whatever else we might think he's, pur he's purposefully and actively working to break down your kingdom. And so, Father, we thank you that we can now recognize the strategy of the enemy, the strategy that sets in place a field, a harvest uh, field where he can operate and where people can move in all various directions to achieve his purposes. And so, Father, this evening, I want to pray for every family, every person who listens to this uh, to this message, who starts to understand what is the strategy of Satan and the kingdom of darkness, that, that realize that their children are in some form of, of, of battle, mm -hmm. that realize that the women in their lives are in some form of battle, mm -hmm. that realize that the, old, the older generation in their lives has been sidelined and and mm -hmm. sidetracked and put off in a in in a in a wrong direction. That if they can see that in their family domain, wherever they are, in the relationships in their family, that any one of these areas of their lives is 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 not where it should be, it's not in line with God's plumb line, then we recognize that they are suddenly in an area where they need to be ready to go to war. I thank you, Father that if we look at our families and we realize that there's a battle with the children, with the woman or with the ogre, that we can immediately understand that we have to follow the battle plan that you gave to Moses, that we must raise up our prayer, our altar, that we must start to petition, that we must start to fight, that we must realize that unless we go to this battle now and stand in this, in this place, that the kingdom of darkness will overrun us as a family mm -hmm. and will destroy us. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, I ask you to open the eyes of every person who's listened to this message. Mm -hmm. Have them truly look at a hard look at their families mm -hmm. and see where they are. And maybe, Father, if they're in a good place, then we come before you to honor you and to bless you and to be grateful and to bring offers, offering of thanksgiving. But, Father, wherever there is an open door, we ask you, Father, that you will help us to understand that we have to move from being loveless 
and lifeless and dead and all the rest of those churches that we have to make a move, a decision to move back to the first love, to become yes. the church of Philadelphia, to be standing fully mm -hmm. in that that you have for us. Mm -hmm. Father, I, I pray that you'll be with everyone that finds themselves in a situation tonight where they realize that they have a battle ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And I ask you, Father, to give them the courage to stand, to know that if they call upon you, that you will be with them. And you will grant them success as long as they push through until the end. Mm. And so, Father, we praise your name for the fact that you've given us insights mm. into the worship of your kingdom, but also insights into the into the strategies of the kingdom of darkness, mm. that we will be able to stand. And more importantly, Father, we'll be able to take our place in the land that you have for us. We'll be able to fulfill our place. Mm. And, Father, tonight we pray that every person who listens will now understand that their whole goal in life is to work for legacy, to make sure they pass the baton on to the next generation who will be able to walk in your ways completely, lifting up your name mm -hmm. and honoring you in every possible way. We ask this, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 May I ask you guys a couple of questions? Sure. You don't need to run. Okay, no. so thank you very much, Rolly, for doing that. And while you were praying, all I got was literally um, Satan is a stalker, like mm -hmm. it, like a dangerous mm -hmm. stalker. Like you've got somebody like that's coming to your door and trying to get in and, and mm -hmm. finding the little broken spots that they can, you know, send an army of ants in. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, this is my question. Um, I think there's such a benefit to hearing stories. Um, I think there's a benefit to sharing stories. What are the boundaries on that? Um, if somebody isn't healed from SRA and they're in the midst of it, should they be sharing and should we be listening to it? Good question. Um, Coleman, I... It's, it's something that's definitely very relevant to what you're doing because you, do, you you want to be careful and you want to do things the right way. And I do believe that um, there is a, I think the person, like with what you are presenting and you are, you are the one who, it's your show, then, and, and you understand how the battle works you'll be able to put your prayer things in place. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll be able to put up the shield of God um, and protect and make sure that um, every listener that is listening, um, you know, that you, before the time you've done your prayer shields and, and everybody is protected because it's in it's your responsibility before God, um, but also each person individually as well. Um, if they are not healed, it is pretty dangerous to That's what I was thinking. get them on board because the back parts are working the whole time, the whole time. They're sending messages, they're scanning, they, I mean, it is like x-raying the whole time. Right. Uh, they've been trained for combat. They've been trained to spot the open doors. They've been trained to know how to take down ministries. They know how to attack marriages. They know what are your, uh, your weak spots. And so I would be very careful um, when to, to pull someone on board. The other danger is that if their families are still um, could possibly active. listen and active as well, they could kill them. And that's a big, big responsibility that you have before God. Yeah. Well, and that's and, why I stopped it. I I, I, yeah. I, I think I told you, I, I don't have anyone telling their testimony anymore. I, hmm. I really do see the dangers of it for, for many reasons. Um, yeah. but, but that brings me to one, my final question, which is, um, I, I've watched them slow kill people. Why do they choose to slow kill somebody over quick kill somebody? Because I've seen both. And 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 I just find it so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um and and how can somebody I mean, 
there's so many victims that have thyroid issues and mm. cancer and mm. like just horrific addictions. And um, how do you, how can they help themselves when they're so far in a pit? It's hard enough when you're clear headed, mm. mm. but when you have um, that kind of oppression, literally trying to slow kill you, yeah. um, any advice on that? And that's my last question. Yeah. Look, the whole thing is, is, Carmen, if they can deceive you and they like to play cat and mouse games mm -hmm. and they like to see you totally lost and you didn't you didn't see this coming. And so the more surprise attack, the more they can stretch it out and you die slowly. It's the suffering. It's yeah. the suffering so that the more you suffer, the more power satan gets and they will get the ranking so if they've been sent on an assignment to infiltrate a ministry to infiltrate a church a prayer group a victim. whatever it is a victim then for them to gain access to actually come on board and to become part of the team is a huge victory. Okay. And now Satan's laughing it. all the way because the whole long thing. Damage. Yeah, long-term damage. Because the whole thing is um, if I can deceive you and you don't know it, and I can deceive a Christian and I can pull the wool over a Christian's eyes, yeah. that is power. That is power. And then I will be rewarded with ranking from Satan. So I'm just going to, this is a, this is a good story to end with, to, to explain, I think just to take it all together. There was this um, guy who, who is a very high up sorcerer here in Africa. And he um, was trained from a little boy. He was breastfed um, by a mermaid. <gasps> And I know what you're talking about. Yeah, about that. Uh, uh, that was his. We life, should do a know. whole thing on that. That yeah. one story and break it down. Yes, yes, it is really, really very powerful. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, and, but I was like, oh no, yeah, no, I sure. saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the whole thing about this guy was um, he was then trained. He was taken to Italy. I mean, this is a young boy from the bush, you know, from the rural. And raised, and and he he was he slept with the snake, the serpent was wrapped around this baby, um, so I mean it's raw raw witchcraft, you know, really African witchcraft, and um, how he was then taken to Italy and given ranking there and trained by the guys there in Italy who we know, and um, trained up, and then they were globalists, so you can be into witchcraft, just rural stuff, but that doesn't give you the ranking of a globalist, of shifting things in nations. Mm -hmm. And so he, he was then trained into that, and he could shift money around in nations. So they gave him a lot of money to, to, to lure the young people at parties into drugs, into eating human flesh, um, this was his, he was given a lot of money. There was a lot of money flying around. He would buy cars for the future advocates, the future doctors, those studying at university. He was full on, on the campus the whole time, luring, marking those who would be in top positions in society. Because once they've trapped you, they blackmail you, and then you you are part of their their kingdom, and they work with you. Anyway, so they they called him. They said to him, "Cup, there's trouble, because you've got a preacher in your country, and he all he's got around him are twenty old ladies who can pray." <laughs> and he said, "This is a young there's, man. There's all these elders. Yeah, yeah. There's there's this young man." <laughs> And he he is a dynamic prayer warrior. Now, I knew him as a young man. And he then came to South Africa. He was thin, thin little guy. 
and and really um, come out of the bush with prayer and fasting and learning how to pray and committed himself. And he so prayed with these 20 old ladies Aww. that would be a wall of fire around him. They couldn't get in. They couldn't attack him. And so they and called him. And he was him protecting a, a nation and he was inhibiting a principality from happening. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he had pulled down every uh, occultic altar in the country. He had dealt with the altars in the country. Him and this group of 20 old ladies. Awesome. And so he said that when this guy would pray, it would echo in, in the spirit world. It would continue to echo and they would see how their demonic altars just fall, fall, fall as he prayed. And this was the anointing that this young man carried. So this, the, the, the people there in Italy said to him, listen, this is trouble. Because it's disturbing all our work. We've worked so hard and nah, nah, and this guy's blasted it all. You know, it's gone. And they said, under no circumstances must you attack this guy because either you'll die, either you will die or you'll get converted. So <laughs> just don't do it. But you need a strategy, a strategy. So they said to him, Pull the bloodline files on these 20 ladies around him mm -hmm. and see what you can get on them. What are their weak spots? They went back 10 generations on each one of these ladies. That's how they started the battle. Then they got this young lady who was part very, very well-trained witch, um, looked like a Christian, could sing beautifully. She approached them and said, can I join the group? Can I join the worship team? Can I join the prayer team? And they would then pray and hear from God if this person could join. And they had found a weakness in one of the 20. They had found someone who had bitterness towards her mother. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, Carmen, for us, we say, oh, come on, bitterness. I mean, how many of us sit with issues? We're angry <laughs> with this, we're upset with this, you know. We've got so many little things, and we think, oh, it's just little things, you know. God will cover all of that. But what happened was they pulled this file. They found this lady's weakness. They sent the school in with a strategy. So they're not doing warfare. They're not going to attack them in any way. But they go in with a strategy. So this girl says, can I join? Can I be part of the worship team? <clears throat> you know, can I, can I join in um, and pray with you guys? And the lady who they had marked with the spirit of bitterness towards her mother, she was the one that was the seer of the group. She was very prophetic. And she prayed and she said, God says, no, you can't join. So when she, she said right. to the young lady, no, God says, no, you can't join. This young lady turns around and you know what she does? She mm -hmm. plays a card and she says, you sound just like your mother. <laughs> Whoosh. Yeah. She went from, z <laughs> she, she took a rocket ship into That's a, it. emotional That's it. Uh, trauma. So that was the door. That was the minute she got angry, she'd opened the door. And that's how they entered into this ministry. And they destroyed this man's ministry completely. Yeah. And I know the background and I'd been there and, you know, had ministered in yeah, that Yeah, we need to have a whole conversation about this so, one. Yeah, so so, so it's so important that don't underestimate God's word Little. when he tells us, be careful, strive for love. Don't let the sun Make set. peace, make peace, make peace. You know, and, and we, we uh, as Rolly said, you know, you trained up, you, what Amalek does is he, waters down it's the compromise mm -hmm. um and then and then oh, 
and God will understand. You know, my mother is so difficult and she was so horrible to me. And 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 I'm sure he'll understand my anger. And I have forgiven her. Of course I've forgiven her, but but it's not re not really in the heart. It's here, but it's not it's not in the heart. Yeah. And so it's just Wow, we got to really walk before God, especially at the that fruit level. of the spirit has to yeah. be in place. Yes, absolutely. and it's interesting too because the armor and the fruit both have peace. They both have. There's a couple others, maybe it's just one, but peace is huge. Yeah, mm. peace. And is so huge. when I see an angry man that claims to be Christian, um, I know he has work to yeah. do. Yes. Yeah, fire yes. to me should be used for good. Like I'm inspired. Yeah. Yes. Fire, sh if you have fire and it's towards bad, it's yeah. just an indication that you've got something to fix. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, wow, yeah. that is such a that is a great story to end on. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And um, if I don't see you before the the new year, have a have a beautiful Christmas. Thank can you. you please tell people a few things? One, go through where people can get Roly's teachings on the weekend, yes. um, his prayer group, or yes. his Bible group. Also, yeah. I personally just want to say this woman and this man do all of this for free on my channel, on other channels, on their things. Canaan Ministries. It's the end of year. Some people have to get rid of a certain amount of money please consider them um they've done so much work also just a christmas gift to amanda and Rolly, even if it's just a cup of coffee um please please pay them for their work they've done such great work and i know you guys would never ask for it so i had to do it for you <laughs> <laughs> thank you carmen thank yeah, you you're really welcome. appreciate that you're welcome um Rolly, they can just send an email and we'll put them on the list so then they can join in on the Saturdays. They'll get a, a Zoom link and they can join. So, yeah, it'll be great um, to have any anyone that wants to learn about the word and to understand God's character and to have that plumb line, um, you know, just adjusted and readjusted in our lives. Yeah. So <laughs> that's very that. good. Yeah. Um, and, and so Colin, what is the email? What is the email? Uh, it's Canaan at iAfrica. Dot com. So that was um, that that first slide that I put up. I told oh, them. Oh, you just did to look do that because I, I had run yes. out. Okay, yes, great. I did. I did tell them to okay, to cool. look at the yeah, and then um, yeah, I, I, we we've been discussing that uh, we'd I'd like to do the the trading floors. I've already started working on the notes and things. Okay, so great. We'll we'll do the slides um, as we go. Okay. And then when we get together again in the new year, I think that would be a pretty good, um, you know, I think it would be a good teaching to look at okay. as well. So, Sounds good. Yeah. And I also wrote down, I would love to speak with you about soul traps. I keep hearing all these people that don't believe in Christ because we're in this reincarnation circle mm -hmm. and all that. And mm -hmm. I would love for you guys to to share your thoughts on how people are interpreting that. Um, and then also the techno sorcery. And obviously, yeah. if you want to quit coming on here, you can anytime. No, <laughs> We're so thankful I love for it. everything. I Here's love it. For the new <laughs> no, I love it, Carmen. I really do. I really, really love it. It's such a blessing and a privilege. Thank you. Honestly. It is fun to to collaborate with with people. It really is, especially yeah. people who are safe. So um, thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. We had a, we had a, a large group today, which was wonderful. Oh, and so good. thanks to everyone for being here. If you could put a like on it, that would be awesome. I rarely ask for those, but, um, I think this is an important teaching. I think people need to hear it because it really is so fundamental about, you know, holding that family together, but to yeah. see specifically the targets, um, yeah. is yeah. really, really powerful so yeah. goodbye everybody thank you amanda thank you really okay. have a wonderful bye -bye. evening bye -bye.